Hello and welcome to Vicious RV, everybody. My name is Josh the RV Dirty. Behind us, the 382 FLRB, the Flurb, which <laughs> sounds like some kind of rock and roll radio station call sign, doesn't it? The Flurb, all hits, all the time. But that's what this one is right here. This is my personal favorite front living room fifth wheel of any front living room fifth wheel I've ever seen. And it's not without a couple little hiccups, but as we go through this video, I'm going to show you what I feel are the highest and the lowest qualities of it so you can make a better, more educated decision. So a couple of little quick bullet points on this one. You've got an unmatched two plus three year warranty with full-time uh, RVing allowances. Um, they uh, have standardized now king beds, but you can still get a queen in it. What's cool, I'm going to show you, even if you get a king, you can still put a queen in it. They have a whole new uh, family, basically, of Overlander solar packages that we might touch on briefly. New 17 and a half inch Uniroyal uh, uh, tires on this thing, which uh, H rated by the way. So when you're hauling this big 15,000 pound beast down the road, you can do so with confidence, especially with that factory standard TPMS. But this thing has a backwards living room. This I love. It has a double pop-up entertainment center. It has the best bathroom ensuite I've ever seen in a fifth wheel. I say with sincerity, I wish I had this bathroom in my own personal house because I think it's just beautiful. I think it's just, it's it's all sorts of smexy. Three, th uh, yeah, 3,000 pound towing hitch on the back. All kinds of sweet things going on in here. Um, again though, it's not without a couple little hiccups. It does have limited traveling access. Um, but for the most part, if I was looking for a big bad rig that I just wanted to either pull somewhere or leave somewhere, and I wanted that separation of kitchen and living room, for me, this is the one that I just keep going back to. I love this RV. Let me know what you think about it, your favorite point, and the one thing you'd change given the opportunity. And if you like how we show you things with a fair lens, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and let's get Doug in there. You guessed it though, Doug still doesn't work here. And since we're looking at something done completely differently, I thought I'd go about my video completely differently and actually begin you from the driver's seat. This is the view from the right-hand theater seat. You know, when you're on Boardwalk and Park Place straight across from your entertainment center right here. What's great about this, they've upgraded to uh, 4K HD TVs, smart TVs. Uh, previously, they weren't quite as smart. They are a little bit more like me. They are a little bit dumb, but they had the potential to be upgraded. Now you just don't got to worry about it. They done went back and got their PhD regardless. Uh, PH HD, pretty high definite. I don't know. You know, I feel like there's something there, but I'll work that out on my own time. What I like about that is if what you're looking for again is that clear definition of living room separated from the kitchen, that pop-up TV situation right there, I think really helps clearly define that. Now of all the fun, fancy things we're going to talk about today, the fact that it actually includes a privacy shade in the entry door amazingly needs to rank among that list because it's shocking how many nice big fifth wheels even on the level of a North Point, are still not doing something like that. And it's such a small thing. Big, just awesome campsite viewing windows, whether you're upstairs or downstairs. And this is another of the uh, recent updates here, these pop-up power towers. When they're in the down position now, that actually doubles as a wireless phone charge pad, which I think is very, very cool. Now, down below that, you might have noticed any uh, any of the walkable slides will be carpetless. And this is my nerd preferred way of doing it when you've got the floor in the slide matching the floor in the living room. Now, the thing is, if the TV faces the theater seat and you're sitting here in the kitchen, you can't really keep an eye on the Maury Povich show or whatever works for you. Well, the good news is they went with an ooh, mm, double screen, ooh, mm, ooh, mm, so mix a lot style. And what's nice is you can have the separation or you can open it right up, which I think is very cool that you have that choice because a lot of front living room fifth wheels, when the TV's all the way up there in the nose, um, you really, generally speaking, lose the benefit of that front window or windshield. And if you're um, not quite as tall as me, I'm going to put you down here at my wife's perspective. You know, she's uh, a little more gravity friendly than I am. Well, that front screen, you have a hard time seeing it. Now, everything is just big. It's open. You can see the screen when you need to, when you want to, you know. You can watch different things in the living room or in the kitchen. And that is where sometimes those um, private listening features on like, uh, you know, uh, a Roku setup or whatever, that can actually be very, very handy for a, uh, a situation like this. Now, again, windows all the way around. And notice those are the bigger 
um, three seater sofas. So you, if you want to have yourself like a big dinner <laughs> dinner party, you want to uh, put on the wine and cheese, have a little charcuterie platter right here. Okay. Now people wonder why um, I say kids my age, but you know people in their forties are all about charcuterie trays. Well, we grew up eating Lunchables, which are basically charcuterie trays. So, you know, do the math. Now look at that center armrest. Alakazam, she goes away. So that if you, uh, it's a more cuddle compliant theater seat. And then of course, you've got the double mega beds right there, uh, giving you some massive guest sleeping capacity. What's cool about that is because these are wider sleeper sofas, um, you know, you can have yourself like if you want to have all of the grandkids or let's say that you have adult children who maybe want to bring their kids, your grandkids with you. You know, that's something that you can do up here. Now, one of the other nice uh, benefits of this design is this has a tall ceiling with that double vaulted arc up there. If you notice all the way against the one side wall, there's plenty of room and all the way against the other side wall, obviously still plenty of room because it's symmetrical. But normally when you're walking in the middle, it just feels even bigger and even more open. Now you might've noticed you don't see the air conditioner. And if you don't see the squares, I swear if you heard a squeak, that was my pants rubbing against this seat. I swear I'm not cracking rats over here. <laughs> So I really like this living room, but the thing is a lot of front living rooms have like a really squished and condensed kitchen. The kitchen really suffers from the design as a result. I don't really feel like that's the case here in these North Points. Like starting all the way up top here, we've got that rain sensing uh, XL vent fan, keeping all the, uh, the heat and the fumes from the cooking and everything out of there. Or you can just open the windows and get some excellent cross ventilation going on. All hardwood slide fascia, by the way. Uh, all pocket screwed cabinets with hidden hinges. Um, you'll see um, soft closed drawers in the, uh, um, well, <laughs> drawers in the kitchen and the bed, uh, bathroom. I'm sorry. Wow. My train of thought just went straight off the rails right there. But um, overall, like I think they did a good job. Like you, they 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 maintained a symmetrical kitchen situation over here in the slide, where like the microwave and the stovetop and everything have some counter space and cabinets on both sides of them. That's the kind of stuff not a lot of brands do. Now, oh, hold on, I want to slow down just a second. I'm gonna take a knee and get way down here, and you can see there are household outlets on the left and right sides of that stovetop. Uh, up under the overhead cabinets because otherwise you're gonna look at that and not see anything you see that larger insignia four burner stove with a bigger oven solid surface countertops um, and you see the drinking water system over here that's a little mini faucet the RV basically has its own five gallon Culligan jug built in and that is actually what feeds the residential refrigerators ice maker and water dispenser now you've got a couple different choices right now we're looking at that resi fridge with the uh ice maker and, and water dispenser it's about 21 or 22 cubic foot of capacity it also comes with an 1800 watt inverter which uh powers not just the fridge but multiple outlets throughout the rv in some key positions uh so like if you do need to make a little travel stay over you do have the ability uh to to perform uh, a little bit of that you know what i mean the other cool thing here is you do have an option for a gas electric two-way fridge. It's 18 cubic foot, big four-door two-way fridge. And if you pair that up with one of their more advanced solar packages, you could have a, a, a pretty effective extended, um, you know, off-grid, like untethered hookups kind of uh, camping situation here. Now, the, uh, the residential fridge, certainly with their more advanced packages, you could run it. But if you're trying to run off pure solar, you're probably going to overpower those batteries very, very quickly. Um, you know, with the resi fridge, you probably mostly want to stay uh, in the parks. Mm, sorry, I had to sneeze there. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Anyway, moving over to the half bathroom, you can see it's a little tight if you're a bigger stature person like me. Like, I'm not super wide. I am fairly long and lanky, though. I need, you know, some decent elbow room. Overall, not too awful bad. But I did incorrectly report something last year. I mentioned how this RV um, had the potential to be built with a butler pantry, like the Montana 3763BP. Unfortunately, that is not correct. That was an error uh, that, that I spat out there. And um, currently, to my knowledge, there is no butler pantry swaption for this. So I'd be curious, is that something you would like? Understanding that if you get rid of that half bath, 
somebody definitely has to go walking through your bedroom to get to the bathroom. Now, you might have noticed how the lats went out in Georgia. That's because I want to kind of showcase these handy little panels right here because this RV has the BM uh, Pro control system. So you have the ability to go R2-D2 digital with this thing, but you also just have switches. Like, watch the reading lights above the bed. You know, you, you don't have to go all over the place. You have your, um, watch the accent lighting in the bathroom. That is super, super cool because you can have, like, nighttime navigation lights uh, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in some key, in the half bath even, some key areas like that so that you can always kind of see, uh, you know, what you're doing without necessarily disturbing everyone. Now, once again, upgraded 4K smart TVs. We've got that uh, whisper ducted air system. So this thing wasn't going to, you know, when the compressor kicks on, wake up and or wake you up and, and, and roar as it were. Now, looking down below this, you see that that's the perfect place for those little guest chairs um, in the uh, uh, under the bed right there for the dining area. But you can also see how uh, you, you've got good dedicated dresser space all around this thing. Um, your hanging storage is one of the points of concern that I do want to bring into this video, however. Because if you notice the right hand, uh, you know, cabinet beside the television, well, that is a hanging wardrobe closet. And then that big cabinet just inside the bedroom, that can also be a hanging wardrobe closet. But as we're going to see here, that is also your washer dryer prep cabinet. So if you go adding a stackable unit instead of a combo or nothing, then you're very quickly going to, uh, you know, have some very limited space in there for hanging storage. That is one of those kind of catch 22s of a lot of big fifth wheels. Now, once again, just simple light switches. And by the way, there's not a single light in this RV that you necessarily have to manually click on or click off. Everything has some kind of remote light switch, effectively. Now, I'm not normally a, uh, a, a big fan of double sink vanity situations like this, but for me personally, I love this bathroom. I love the look of it. I love that double rear corner. I love the symmetrical corner look of this thing. The double backlit morning mirror medicine cabinets. You know, there's just all kinds of good news going on uh, in this thing. Plus, with this being extra tall, I never feel like I'm going to knock my noggin in this thing. Now, over here around the corner, you've got that 300 pound rated fold up down teak seat. And you see, that's just an easy step in shower. I'm, I'm very happy with the color pattern and everything on this. Uh, updated shower fixture here and again just like we saw uh in the living room the headroom in this upper deck is fantastic it's very comfortable very easy height adjustable shower hardware is something uh that my wife and i would probably find some enjoyment out of again considering uh we are drastically different in terms of verticality between the two of us and again we've got the big xl vent fan up here i'm gonna give them some serious credit i've seen some big high-end uh, allegedly high-end high dollar fifth wheels Cut in that corner recently and um, not including those big XL vent fans. And I, I just can't believe that in a big fifth wheel like this, somebody wouldn't do that. Now, over here again, this could be huge dresser space. It could be closet space. You see how that shelf folds up out of the way. It gives us, um, you know, extra uh, hanging storage if we want it. You could throw a combo washer dryer unit in the bottom. You could do a stackable uh, on top of one another. But again, if you do that, like a lot of front living fifth wheels, um, since you don't have that traditional massive front closet, you do very quickly limit your, um, you know, hanging storage capacity. So you've got to really decide and balance one against the other. And I think it's time for road mode. And now the road mode access on this, it, it does have maybe a point of consideration I'm going to share with you here. And again, if you appreciate how we take the time to close these slides, to tell you the good with the bad, please hit that subscribe button if you're new with us. And if you're not, leave me a little comment, tell me thanks for the hard work, or hit the like button, or whatever works for you. What I'm getting at here is if you get the residential refrigerator, you lose the fridge section in transit unless you open the kitchen slide. You maintain access to the freezer portion, however. If you get the gas electric two-way, you'll be able to get to the full fridge up top and or at least partial. I don't know. You can get to the part of the fridge. It's been a little while since I saw one. Watch my previous videos where we did have a gas electric two-way. The thing is, that kind of doesn't bother me, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Now, real quick. When the bed's closed, unless you climb over it, you're not going to get back to your bathroom ensuite, but you don't need to because you have that half bath here. And, you know, our uh, bed, when it's all closed up, is just, bam, right there. So what was I talking about with the uh, refrigerator? 
And I'll try to keep this short because I know I blather on a lot. Okay, so if you're looking at a residential fridge model, chances are, for the most part, I think you're going to be parked somewhere. So the travel accessibility, logically, to me, feels like a secondary concern. If you're getting the gas electric two-way fridge, you might be a little bit more mobile. Uh, you might be doing some off-grid camping. You might just use it differently, you know? Sometimes the fridge shapes that. Being able to get to more of the fridge with that one makes a little bit of sense. So you have your choice, and uh, how it works out just really depends on the equipment that's present on the RV in question. I don't know if that was any clearer. <laughs> now outside here, starting right up front, the uh, the angular look of this. Ooh, we got a little sunshine. We're getting blinded by the light. Oh, hope you're not all revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night over here, but just the... Uh, the whole smex appeal, the nose of this thing just going down the road, that is a Kathleen head turner. And if somebody can give me a better, less dated reference than that, uh, maybe uh, it's time that I update some of my jargon. Regardless, this thing right here, well, let's talk towing real quick. Between the size and the weight of this, I don't know that Dually isn't the wrong default response. This is a big rig. 15,000 pounds dry weight, dual slides up front means a pretty decent hitch weight on it. I don't, I think you're going to want that extra payload and that extra stability if you're towing it. But let me throw you this idea. What if you don't want to tow this thing? What if you're like, listen, I just want a site. I just want it set up. Give us a call. We can get it delivered for you. And you know what? You can keep your little uh, smart car. <laughs> you don't need a big truck to tow this thing. Notice we've got the outside TV hookups and they actually leave us a nice little place down there to run those through. Uh, easy access to your centralized vacuum system. A lot of brands will make you like climb halfway into the belly to get to that thing. And the one that we're looking at here is only solar prepped. But if you want to get down here, uh, you know, to where you want to mount a charge controller and everything, like they, they build these nice little access panels in, which is really, really handy. My only little nitpick in this basement, I said TV hookups, but like the TV hookups are in the opposite corner of the basement from the little area where you would run the cables outside. But what is actually kind of nice, the fact that uh, down here in the drop frame, they do skirt this thing so that it just gives it a better, more cleaner look overall. Now, as long as we're uh, getting low over here and my knees are popping and locking like a hip hop dancer, you can see that that is a forced air heated pass through. And we have that um, double radiant barrier layering going on uh, across the bed and the bath deck so that you get better, more even heating and cooling. Uh, because you know, you wake up at night, you get chilly toes and it just, you're, it just feels like your feet are getting stabbed by the little bed goblins, you know what I mean? The bed goblins, by the way, Ted, Ned, and Fred, those are those guys that live under your uh, your bed, and if your feet hang off the bed at the end of the night, they have razor-sharp teeth that can rend flesh from bone effortlessly. Uh, but Ned, <sighs> that guy's weird. Uh, that guy's that guy's weird ever since the accident. Neither here nor there, no. Um, so what do we got? We've got a fully enclosed privatized docking center. Um, North Points have always been 0 to 100 degree rated, tested, and proven. We've got roof factory solar prep, a little side solar plug. And I like how they put like their little uh, you know water filter thing right out here where it's easily accessible. You don't have to tear apart half a cabinet to get to it. Now, you might notice something. Those are 40-pound propane tanks. That is not the standard. By default, North Points would normally be equipped with dual 30-pound tanks right here. Interesting note, though. When you upgrade to the generator prep or actually go on and get the full-on generator, uh, you will... Uh, gen prep is what we're looking at here by default. Or rather, by default, there's no gen prep, just to clarify that for you. But if you get gen prep or a generator, you upgrade not to just two of those 40 pound propane tanks, but three of them. You literally double the propane. And where I think that is cool is, what if you know you actually do want to cold camp in this thing? Folks, you're gonna burn a lot of propane. Having that extra propane capacity right there, uh, you're, you're not gonna regret it, I can tell you that much. Now, um, if you look at that marker light just behind the nose cap, you might notice how it's got like a little bit of a black housing on it. These are always prepped for uh, rear and side view cameras. So if you want a full on observation suite, you can have it. And what's also really cool about Jayco is they have their J Smart turn signal safety lighting package. So that uh, if you do flip on your right hand signal, every light that you see down the side of this trailer plus additional rear and, uh, and front like upper clearance lights will blink with your turn signal. Basically, you're giving other people down the road an idea of what you're doing. Notice though, dual power awning. So you do have one power awning that is mostly occupied by steps and a slide. 
But then you've got this one right over here, which is just pure patio picnic time, baby. Um, what's kind of cool about this, and I am right up by the road, as you might have noticed, so I'm going to try not to play Frogger and get squished. But um, let me get... Okay, I got a little break in traffic. Let me, I'm doing the shoulder check over here. With those double awnings open, man, you've got yourself some fantastic patio party space. But speaking of that, what I like about North Point, they are really willing to do plus one more than just about anybody else. So under that elevated uh, bedroom and bathroom ensuite, you have yourself additional outside storage and this really awesome uh, uh, out outdoor little picnic patio area. Now new for 23, they're running their inverter prep to the outside refrigerators. So like this RV that we're looking at has a residential fridge. That means this has an 1800 watt inverter. That means that fridge is active and live going down the road, which it did not used to be. That is an awesome, awesome update. They're still including an actual sink with a drain into a holding tank right here that a lot of brands do not do. Not just all the little handy dandy things, uh, all the galvanized rolled steel, this whole slide out situation here. Now, I am really glad to see that they're able to actually ship these in a, like ship a complete RV basically, because about the last year and a half, these were supposed to come with Blackstones. Unfortunately, uh, and I like Blackstone. I think they're an excellent company that make a fantastic product, but I think their eyes got bigger than their stomach at the buffet. They were promising, yeah, no, no, no. We could definitely keep up with your uh, volume supply, Jayco. We will make sure that we can always get you uh, griddles for your products. And unfortunately they could not. And as a result, they did have to part ways on their partnership. The good news, at least we have a griddle that is a, uh, you know, giving us a complete product now. But again, because this has such an extended rear upper deck, uh, which isn't something that you say every single day in the RV industry, you have, uh, the, the front passenger storage wasn't big. So they're really compensating for that nicely over here. Now, earlier I talked about the TV hookups as a bit of a nitpick. I, th that's partially due to the fact that here in the rear basement, you have a full additional set of outdoor entertainment hookups. It's that kind of like crazy nonsense that makes me, you know, it's just, Jayco doing Jayco things on these, basically. And you've got the same, like, double thermal foil weather treatment and everything going on in this pass-through that we already talked about in the front one. Um, you've got uh, black tank flushes for both bathrooms. And I really stress that because you may not realize that isn't necessarily something every manufacturer does for us. There's a lot of brands that only include a black tank flush for the primary bathroom, not for any sort of half bath or anything like that. And you know what? A black tank flush is just one more way that you can potentially avoid dealing with the pyramid, which is where uh, you have your solid matter in your black tank build up and your liquid matter runs off. Then you end up with this big bad news pyramid brick uh waiting for you there i'm not gonna lie looking through the camera right there seeing that car turning at me i had a bit of a miniature heart attack for a second then i realized that yes i'm right by the road and they're turning uh onto the road so ne neither here nor there um again a, a third pass through com uh, cavity and then down here we've got ourselves that 3,000 pound rated towing hitch uh with four-way uh plug and um safety chain hooks the thing with that is this is long enough most states, I don't know that you're necessarily going to need to, or going to be able, as it were, to um, actually do some doubles towing. Um, oh, and again, I'm all about being fair, telling you the good with the bad. There is one other little hiccup on the outside of this one I feel you deserve to know about before you go spending your money. And that uh, is right down here. Ooh, ooh, spent a day walking around uh, Cedar Point Roller Coaster Park with the family yesterday, and the calves today are like, <laughs> Uh, regardless, you probably don't care. What I'm getting at is this is uh, a two sewer hookup kind of floor plan. Um, even though they're very close to one another, evidently they couldn't get plumbed together. I, I'm not sure. I don't understand the engineering or the logistics. Maybe it's possible and they just never considered it. All I am doing is basically sharing what I can physically actually see here so you can make the best and most educated decision possible. And if you appreciate how we, we go out of our way to point out the good and the points of concern like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video. Leave me a little nerd, nerd, <laughs> note. Thanks, nerd, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> And I realized I almost forgot to uh, give you a quick look at the roof here. Now, that's an important thing with Jayco's because this runs on their Magnum Trust XL6 roof system. And that sounds super marketing, super boring. But what this all means in English is this has 
double vaulted roof trusses. So they're vaulted inside and outside equally, meaning you have even structure and even insulation across the span of the roof. That is something that is a little bit atypical and superior as compared to a lot of rigs out there. Now, they're not the only ones to do that, but uh, a lot of brands frankly don't. Now, you're also seeing things like solar panels up here. That's something else I want to tell you about. The one that we're looking at today is only roof solar prep. That's the base standard. However, they are now offering four different solar packages on these 200, 400, 600, 1200 watt. Um, my personal opinion is I would like to see Bish's RV adopt at least a 200 watt package across the board and that has a 30 amp charge controller so you could bump that up to a 400 uh, pretty easily if you wanted to. But if you wanted to go with like a two-way fridge and you wanted to go with a more advanced solar package and you really wanted to live life untethered up here, uh, well, oh, I don't know why I said up here, neither here nor there, you get the idea. This is an RV that you could build for something like that. And there's a lot of uh, other campers out here that maybe they have some kind of solar package, but most of the time it tends to be pretty minimal. So when we began this thing, however many minutes ago, I said this is my personal front living room fifth wheel, but there's certainly plenty of other ones out there. What do you see here that you like? What do you see different? Is there a front living room that you think you like a little bit better? Because, I mean, certainly Montana, Solitude, uh, Paradigm, they all have some very good, very smexy options. And maybe it's just because this one does dare to be a little bit differently. It speaks a little louder to me. But I'd love to hear from you. Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? And I will leave you links in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability at any of our Bish's RV stores. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.